Hi, hello. How's everyone doing? Welcome in another episode of In the Bonus. I'm Megan Caffrey. Lisa is back with us. We've got Lisa Carlin and Isis Young. What's up, guys? How are we doing? Oh, good. It's so Hi, good friends. to be back. I've missed you guys. I've been traveling and all over the place. So uh, thanks for holding it down without me. Um, the episodes have been great, but you know, I'm, I'm, it's good to be back. Yeah, welcome back. We've missed you so much. We but Jane's not back together because Kim's not here this week. Our girl <laughs> is um, this week actually flying back. Kim was just, I know she talked about it last week on the pod, but she was just out in LA doing some incredible studio work with Fox. And so she's traveling back oh, she's a from superstar. LA where, yeah. And she was also just living her best life. I texted her. I was like, you do understand you're flying back into snow. Yeah. So <laughs> welcome back to the East Coast, girl. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> chaos. Absolute chaos. <laughs> and you know what's been, no, you know what? It, I'm not going to call it chaotic because we've had some really good games. So it hasn't been chaotic, but we've had some really good games as of recent. And before we get into breaking down those games, let's give a shout out to the three teams, the three Big East women's basketball teams in the AP poll. They all moved up this week in the poll. So let's go UConn checking in this week at number nine. And then we've got Creighton at 21 and Marquette right behind them at 22. Let, oh, Lisa, go Marquette. Golden of course. How can you not be? I mean, it's fantastic. <laughs> Ice, you actually got to watch them. You're on the call for their game against DePaul this uh, this past week. What were your yeah. thoughts on that one? Um, first of all, it took everything for me to get to Marquette. I had oh, a flight sure. booked from Philly to Charlotte, Charlotte to Milwaukee. The Charlotte to Milwaukee got canceled. Then they added Philly to Chicago, Chicago to Milwaukee, flying <laughs> to Chicago. Chicago to Milwaukee gets canceled. <gasps> I've got to drive. Guys, the drive normally from Chicago to Milwaukee is an hour and 20 minutes. Yep. I did it in two and a half hours in a snowstorm. Oh, like, my I, gosh. When I, I, guys, like Megan Duffy, I really appreciate your teams. <laughs> Doug Bruno, I really appreciate your teams. I want you to know what I did Seriously. to make sure that I was there to represent the Big East because, <laughs> and I tell you guys, I've never drove in snow that thick, that oh. what kind serious, of like What kind of rental cold. car did they get you? At least something like oh, SUV. I had a GMC. Yes, okay. I definitely yeah, I had a GMC. Um, yeah, like four wheel drive. So I was, you know, as prepared as I could be. But like normally, you're like, oh, I'm just gonna get on the road, hour and twenty minutes, and knock it out. And I'm like, ten and two, grandmother, was, like I mean, searching. Yeah. That's exhausting too, like yeah. mentally, physically, to yes. drive in that much snow and for that long. Oh. I mean, luckily yeah. you were in Chicago. It's not like they flew you into I don't know Indianapolis or somewhere, so you'd have to drive a little right. farther. Like Chicago's the closest you're getting to Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, miserable. it was good. I really don't know. That's miserable. Yeah. Were your flights all? changed because of the um like the airplane thing that's going on oh man oh wait no no, no. i oh we had a storm okay, okay. the airplane okay. thing they're they're not flying certain yeah. airplanes <laughs> that's a topic for another that's a topic oh for gosh yeah let me do my current events jeez I'm not, gonna t I'm not gonna let you in if you don't know what happened because now you're not gonna maybe want to fly for a bit <laughs> yeah i would agree it's a little terrifying yeah. Okay. Okay. The game, but I got to the game. Hoops. Anyway, back to who? Yep. Let's I land. The plane. Land the plane. Let's land the plane. <laughs> Landed uh, in Marquette. Uh, it was awesome. Um, really good experience working for CBS Sports. Just another really good game. Honestly, um, you know, I think um, DePaul is still a team that's trying to find themselves. Right? They're young. Um, they've got a lot of different uh, players on their roster. I think it's eight that are different from last year. And so they're still building. Um, and so that's what it looks like. It looked like an experienced Marquette team was playing a young, inexperienced, you know, lack of chemistry to Paul team. Mm -hmm. um, and so eventually they pulled away. Um, I was really impressed with, you know, Marquette as a whole, just 20 assists on the game. Um, Coach Megan Duffy had gotten honor for having her 100th win at Marquette um, before the game. And so we showed like some film of that. So that was really awesome. Um, and got to do a post-game interview with her. And she's just, you know, she's thriving at Marquette and, and really has just, like, elevated that program. Um, so it was a good game. You know, I think DePaul learned a lot about themselves. Um, they had someone different that was a leading scorer for the team. Um, so they're just figuring it out. And it's just tough to do on the road, especially in that type of rivalry. DePaul-Marquette is, is a rivalry in the Big East. So um, good game for Marquette. And um, it was really, really good trip. 
besides the snowstorm drive. <laughs> was the trip back home easier at least? Yes. Yes. The trip back home was, was easy. Yes. Yes. Oh, praise the Lord. I mean, it's dangerous <laughs> out here tra traveling in the winter. Gosh, so bad. So you bad. need snow tires or something. Lisa, <laughs> you weren't on a game this past week, but I, I know you were able to talk a little bit yeah. um, to Denise Dillon yeah. at Villanova. Talk to us about uh, what she had to say, especially I, I'm curious. Did you guys talk about Lucy? Because oh, yeah. I was able to. Yeah. OK, let's see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I, of course, had the pleasure to speak with Villanova head coach Denise Dillon, um, who I personally have been covering for a very long time. I covered her when she was at Drexel um, in the yes. city in Philadelphia as well. And then, of course, she's been at Villanova now four years. That's one of the things we reminisced mm -hmm. on. I was like, three years, four years? <laughs> Time absolutely flies. Um, and and yeah. with what she's been able to do with the Wildcats, of course, is taking over after a legend and now being there. Um, at, at, they just picked up, Villanova just picked up their fifth win in a row. So things started to click for them a little bit. They got 65-54 win over Butler this past weekend. And now they head into a crazy week for them. I mean, she laughed about how the scheduling works because it's hilarious. She, they have a couple of days of practice. Wednesday, they play number 22 ranked Marquette. And then Sunday, number 21 ranked Creighton. Then it's Providence to Paul. And then they play UConn. It is like Woo! their end Goodness. of January is stacked. Nice. And it, it, I mean, she, Denise Dillon mentioned how it's just an opportunity now for her team to be tested, right? To be able to kind of put all the pieces that they've learned together um, and, and put those pieces together on the court. It, it, when you look at who they're going to play, of course, Marquette, um, a team that is so efficient offensively and then defensively, they are so organized. It, it's really uh, aggressive on defense. So they have to play both ends of the court really, really hard. Then against a Creighton side who is going to shoot from deep. Uh, Villanova is going to have to play really, really, really tough defense and then be able to generate some offense when they get those chances. So it's trying to balance all these different opponents that they're about to go up against. But when you look at kind of where Villanova has come so far this year, um, she talked about what her team has learned with me. And for Villanova, mm -hmm. they've learned that they've got to have a lot of urgency from the jump, that they have to be for prepared for what's at stake, mm -hmm. um, handling possessions until the very last minute, like the realization that that you have to be ready every single night to go, especially now that they're in Big East play. Um, mm -hmm. a, a player that – of she's been really impressed with is Nia Jones this year saying how much Jones has really stepped up um, knowing that she's really been handed the key. She's running point for this Villanova team and she has the Jones has the awareness knowing what it's all about, mm -hmm. knowing what's necessary, knowing that there are no days off. And she's actually seen that a lot from Jones take that next step and be able to step up. Because when you think of Villanova basketball right now, you do think of Lucy Olsen and yeah. how much she's been able to do. But that's also a lot of pressure on Lucy Olsen to do that. And you can see it. So they're trying to give Lucy the tools to be able to unlock different things within a game, not carry the weight of the world on her shoulders, especially when things aren't going right for her. But in the end, really be able to rely on some other pieces like Jones, like Maddie Weber, a freshman that um, has seen some growing pains throughout the year so far, but she can be great relief for Lucy to have that second or third person in the game, being able to put up points and, and score and have that offensive presence. So that's really what she Denise Dillon is hoping for her team to find throughout, especially this next stretch of really, really tough games. One thing that Denise Dillon said her team never, ever lacks is effort. Since the summer, mm -hmm. they have come out and they have given – over a hundred percent. It's never been a question of effort. It's just making sure that all the other pieces fall into place for them. Um, and she, that they've seen a lot already this year, right? They've had some tough games and they've had some really good games. And now they're going to really be tested over these next two weeks of play, especially this week with Marquette and Creighton back to back with just a couple days difference. I love that point on Jones, mm -hmm. though, because if you mm -hmm. look at her stat line, guys, last season, she she didn't have the starting role, right? She was nope. averaging 10 minutes a game. Yeah. Now yeah. she's on the court for just under 25 minutes a game. And so, like, 
credit to her yeah. for step when her name was stepped up, she's making the most out of it. And that's, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. It, I think it, too, like she just, I think she also can provide that scoring threat, you know, Meg, you and I were at that game where they beat Seton Hall at Seton Hall and she had some nice timely jump shots, some nice timely plays really good off the bounce. And so I kind of felt like too, okay, when, you know, Lucy Olsen maybe isn't getting it or when Christina Dulce is being double teamed, do you have this now third person? Yeah that you've mm -hmm. got to pay some attention to. Um, and it just makes Nova that much more dangerous, especially with everyone else hitting threes and sharing the wealth from outside. Yeah. Yeah. And Lisa, so you, you mentioned Villanova's game against Creighton this upcoming Sunday. That's on CBS SN. Yeah. Um, that's actually, that's a home game for Villanova. Yeah. So back to back home a, games a for Villanova, yeah, which is home helpful for them in this stretch. Yeah. Yeah. Great. But you also, you talked to Creighton head coach, Jim Flannery, also. Sure so did. talk to us about the, the Jays a little. Yeah, so it, the, it's almost a tale of two sides here because Villanova, they have to prepare for, um, of course, Marquette and then Creighton. Meanwhile, Creighton, they have off. They, this is their bye week right now, which um, Villanova's came right before Big East Conference play. They really dove into it. And now for Jim Flannery and, and the Jays, they get this bye week now. So the players have off a couple days this week. Today, they got massages. They had some rest. Stop and it. I know. I was like, how do I get in on this? Um, yeah, a little bit. Of, they, they did have some a little bit of a shoot around, a skill session, but then massages for all the players some of the players that that aren't playing as many minutes are going to come in and still shoot around this week but the focus is to kind of reset and recover while they can this week while still keeping sharp on, on all types uh, mm -hmm. on all really facets of the game because when they get back into it they're on the road they'll travel um, and, and of course play against Villanova on Sunday and then they'll just stay on the East Coast play Georgetown next Wednesday um, so a week from to, from now when this podcast drops so for Jim Flannery uh, one thing that he he really has this year if you look at his roster um, is two teams a team that is six fourth year players and then four other players that are brand new and trying to develop into this system. So um, there are elements of coaching this side for him that he has to balance giving too much information and not enough information over coaching and under coaching because it really is two different sides for him when you have six four year players fourth year players that know your system understand the intensity understand what it takes to go on the road and play in the big east and then you have all these other younger players you have to try to get those younger players all caught up while not forgetting about the tiny details that these upperclassmen are trying to focus on. So mm -hmm. having those different conversations with players and coaches is something that he's really tried to do this year um, and, and making sure that they can find that balance. Um, one thing that Jim Flannery did talk to me about was a, going into some of these different games and, and really what he has enjoyed with his side is that with these upperclassmen, they take care of the details. They understand mm -hmm. how to talk to each other in communication. So in, in training, when they're going 5v5 and he says, all right, you have 30 seconds with your team to get together and, and problem solve, they are, are fourth year players that are immediately understanding what the issue is, talking about it, being verbal in those communications because they want to get better and they understand the game. So he leans on that for those upperclassmen players to say in a game, what's happening? Help them decide for themselves because those players see the game so differently on the court than he does on the sidelines. And he wants to utilize that information from those players. So Flannery asks them and says, okay, when the screen's coming, how do you want to handle it? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, at, Molly or, or Emma Ronsick, how do you want to post up down below? Um, which way do you want to run this ball uh, up top, Lauren? Like, how do you want the game to, to be seen and to be played? And they're really good at that, seeing it, understanding it, and communicating it. So he has these two types of teams of players on his roster, but he can lean on the upperclassmen to kind of help him out in, in terms of what they're seeing and how that translates. Um, so a, a big week for the Blue Jays as they kind of reset and recover before they get into another long stretch of, of games after this bye week. I think that's such an interesting take of, of looking at mm -hmm. with, you know, it's zooming in within the one team. I'm curious because you brought up the bye weeks, Lisa, I, I'm curious with you with when you played, if it ever happened to you and maybe it didn't, but 
would there ever have been a preference of if you could pick when when you have the the buy is it do you prefer it mid conference play to just kind of be able to get mm. you know we're halfway through let's get a little reset before we start doing that final push towards the conference tournament or is it nice with after the grind that non conference play is with all of the travel and the different types of teams you're seeing is there a preference one way or not or another yeah, I would say like, you know, you get two breaks, right, really in the season. You get that Christmas-ish break, or you should at least get that, and then you get the bye week. Um, and so I would say you want those a bit spread apart. I would think like a good time for a bye week would be like middle February, mm-hmm. you know, like or like early February, where it's kind of like we're towards the end, we need a break, maybe or we're a little beaten up. Um, and then we can take a break, reset, knock out, you know, the rest of conference, play those two or three games and then get prepared for tournaments. It's like it allows you to go hard in January and then get a little bit of a break in February and then finish your season, get to conference play, um, conference tournament and like, you know, be rested and not feel like you were going for too much straight. Yeah, that's a good point. I feel like the, the storyline that continues around UConn, right, it's like they need more. They we need to give them more rest because unfortunately injury after injury right. keeps happening mm-hmm. right but the, the huskies are looking good they're jumping in the polls right they're continuing to shine they're having their younger players we've talked about it plenty on the pod already with the freshmen how they're they're stepping up Paige beckers obviously continues to shine we're pumped we're going to talk to the queen coming up here in just a bit but i i know we, we were talking about it last week on last week's episode with yeah. you we were kind of highlighting their game against St. John's. What are your thoughts on how the Huskies are continuing to produce no matter what's thrown their way? Yeah, honestly, I think that's the thought, right? Is that they've just been resilient. Um and it's really good to see. I think because you know, as a general basketball fan of women's basketball, you want the Huskies to be at their greatest potential and be competing because you want to see great basketball and you want to see that get challenged. And so it's been tough with the injuries that they faced, but amidst that they've weathered the storm through their young players. I mean, Ashlyn shade has won a big East rookie of the week four times this (laughs) season. Um, KK Arnold has been uh, exceptional as well, scoring in double figures. Um, And so you're just seeing different players step up and then, you know, like old sweet and steady, Paige and Aaliyah Edwards have been just still putting everyone on their back and really being the veterans Um, and and Nika as well. And so I think, um, you know, you're just you're happy that they're in the top 10 this week because through all that they've been going through, somehow this team is still managing to climb the ranks and get better. Um, And I thought their win over St. John's was just so strong. Um, scoring 92 points. You know, this was number one against number two in the Big East, right? St. John's was kind of on a roll. They were four and one. Um, You know, Paige had 22, seven and three assists. She missed one shot. She was eight for nine. You know, had a terrific game. Efficiency like crazy. Um, You know, Ice Brady also had a good game. Seven of 11 from the field for 17 points. So another young player that's getting some more time and starting to get comfortable and produce for them. Um, And so I think it's just good to see that they're honestly, you know, still very competitive, um, you know, getting stronger as the season goes on, despite some of the key injuries that they've lost. Well, we got to hear from Paige herself. We talked about not only do we and and this was a fun conversation because we talked hoops. Obviously, we have to talk hoops. It's a basketball (laughs) podcast. But we talked to Paige Beckers about so much more. Let's listen in. The UConn Huskies are coming off of a big win over St. John's this past week as now we're now joined with Paige Beckers, who had 22 points in that game. Hey, Paige, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Yeah, thank you for having me. Of course. Um, Let's just start right there with your game against St. John's. Notably, um, one of your freshmen, Ice Brady, one of your teammates, she had a career-high 17 points in that game. Could you just talk to us a little bit more about Really, what was the difference maker for you guys? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like every single game, there's a different different person that breaks out. Our freshmen have been great this whole entire season. Um, they've kind of been thrown into the fire, and they haven't had a choice but to perform mm-hmm. at a high level for us. Just, that's just kind of what we need when, under the circumstances we've been given. Um, but I think Ice just coming out aggressive, um, a huge 
like gr- area of growth for her is like her mental approach um, and not being so hard on herself and knowing that you're going to make mistakes, especially her being a freshman um, and us older guys and us, the coaching staff just continue to voice confidence in her and understand that we know she's going to make mistakes, but as long as she play, she plays hard, she plays with an intensity and effort um, and she continues to play how she played that other night. Um, it's going to be huge for us going forward. Paige, you, uh, one, I'm a huge fan of Ice. Um, I just think she's got the coolest name ever, which is why I adopted <laughs> it as a nickname. Um, but, you know, you guys have had to weather the storm. You alluded to it a little bit here. Um, tell me from a leadership standpoint, as you're weathering the storm, as you guys are going through injuries, you're finding different people to play and step up, what does that look like for you as a leader? I think... Obviously, it's hard um, just going through what we've gone through, not even this year, but the, the past couple of years. Um, but I think I have a different perspective, whereas last year I was the one sitting out, not being able to play. So just continue to voice that to the other guys who are able to play, how blessed we are and how grateful we are to play the game of basketball and how quick it could be taken away. Um, so just never taking it for granted, playing every possession um, like it's your last because you, you really never know. Um, and just staying positive um, as much as we can get down and look at all the negatives that has happened for us, just staying positive um, and continue to be a leader in in the way that I play the intensity, the passion um, and just staying confident no matter what five we have out there, um, voicing our confidence within each other and the strength within each other um, and the love that we have for each other um, gets us through a lot of it. Um, So just leading that way and staying confident um, and, getting confidence out of my teammates that no matter what five we have out there, we're going to go out there and play hard. Paige, I would never, uh, right. You never want anyone to be injured, but you really have been through a lot. And so you get to see both sides of the coin. You can talk to all of your teammates because you've been where the ones that are injured are, have been, and now you're healthy and you get to see that side of it. And your perspective on that, um, is really mature, really enlightening. It's it, this group has gone through a ton of adversity, uh, unfortunately, but it despite all of that, this team has come together again. What has galvanized this group? What has brought your team together this year? I think just the resilience that we have, um, the inspiration that we find within each other, um, and just wanting to play for each other, wanting to play for the people who can't and wanting to play for the people who can, um, and just the leadership of, of our coaches, um, and their confidence in us, no matter who we have out there, who can play, who can't play, who's in the lineup, who's not, um, them continue to coach us the same way, have the same expectations. Um, and us as players, just even banding together, even stronger. Um, and I think as much as we've been through, um, you know, the quote, like what, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So we just try to live by that. Um, and just embrace it, really. Speaking of embracing something, Paige, if if anyone has followed you on social media, listened to an interview, um, whether it's a post game or just a a more in-depth interview um, with you before, it is so evident of the importance and how much you embrace your faith. And, you know, I feel like whenever people want to talk to you, they want to talk like, how has your game grown? But I'm, I'm curious, mm-hmm. honestly, for you, with your journey of, of where collegiate basketball has taken you and the ups and the downs, how has your faith grown throughout this journey? Yeah, well, thank you for asking that. Because like you said, a lot of people just ask me about the basketball aspect of life. But I think my faith has gotten me through these past couple of years. Um, I started really in high school. I kind of really started to grow in my faith and wanted to grow my faith and made efforts um, and made progress in that. But I think when I started to really grow is when I gave up my own wanting to understand of life. Um, Cause you can look at the, the stuff that we've been through the, the past couple of years and try to make sense of it. And you really can't like, yeah. I leave everything in God's hands um, and lean on his understanding and lean on my trust that I have for him and that everything happens for a reason um, and we're only going to come out stronger than this. Um, so it's kind of just letting go of everything you want to do in life and continue to do everything for the Lord and serve, serve his purpose. And I try to use my platform and the gifts that I've been given to glorify God. Um, and a lot of it is for me this year personally, like inspiring younger girls and younger athletes and people who have gone through injuries and have gone through adversity that you can't come back strong. You can't come back 
better, confident, um, bigger, um, and injuries don't have to wipe you out. But, I mean, they take you out for some time, but you can get better, grow in your faith, grow in who you are as a person, who you are as an athlete. Um, so I've really taken pride in that this year um, and tried to spread how much my faith has done for me. When you take a look at um, your team and the freshmen on your team, what do the personalities look like? Because it, you guys are young and you've got new people that you're around and you're a little bit older now. So how's the personality balance? Like, are you the grandma, so to speak? Like, are you pretty chill and in the mix? Like, are they on TikTok and you're on Facebook? Like, what, what does this look like? Honestly, I hang out with KK and Ice a lot. They kind of mm. keep me young as, as I'm getting older. I feel like <laughs> I'm definitely one of the older guys on the team. So they keep me young. They, I don't know if I want to call it like the TikTok generation, but like, you, can definitely, yeah. you can definitely see them, um, especially with like Q, KK, Ice. Um, Ash is more like off social media and she's more of like, I don't know. She's less like them, I would say. Um, <laughs> but they all have different different things in their personality, um, different ways. I think they just brought, brought a light to this team. Um, it kind of reminds me similar to what my freshman class brought when we came in, um, just like an energy, a light, um, and just their kids that I love being around. We all love being around. We embrace them, um, and they kind of all bring a different personality, but they're all super fun, super mm. engaging, and just awesome to be around. I, I think we can call them the TikTok gen generation. Yeah. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, I Don't think worry. it's safe. It's all right, safe. So, Pedro, are you in the TikToks? Do you get in on, on the videos and, and making them? Yeah, I, like KK is a huge influence on me. Um, I've actually been – and it's hard because a lot of my TikTok is like – ad dominant and so I'm trying to like balance it out and make sure that that's not I don't know I, that's not that <laughs> everybody sees is just ads and stuff so she's she's taught me some dances she makes it easy because she just has that energy and aura about her oh that's so fun she like a social media manager she like social media managing you a little bit giving you some tips I mean she could if she wanted to <laughs> Paige, I want to ask you uh, about before the X's and O's, right? Before you hit the court, whether that's before a game or even before practice during shoot around, what are some superstitions or processes that you have leading up to uh, when you get on the court and, and when it's game time? Yeah, that's, I don't really have any superstitions. I know like I always have my game day braids in. That's always like, my signature look, I guess. Um, always pray before games, before right before I go out on the court, before in the locker room. And honestly, I'm like a, a person who I'm kind of backwards. Like I don't like shooting a lot before practice. I don't like shooting a lot before the game. I don't know because I feel like I just I'm just gonna save it. And yeah. I usually, especially after practice, like I usually do my work after practice. But lately, I've been shooting a lot of free throws, just getting like my form right, um, and starting inside and then going outside. But I would say mostly, like, my routine is, like, the game day braids, of course, um, and then listen to gospel music, and then on the bus, I listen to more, like, other, like, game day music, um, and then prayer right before I get on the court. I like that. All right, so Paige, with every guest who's on the pod, we have a really fun game that we play. It's called In the Bonus, so I'm going to turn it over to Ice. She's going to explain the game a little bit more to you, and then we're going to we're gonna wrap it with uh, our, our In the Bonus round. All right. Okay, so it's um, not that fire of a rapid fire, but it's just questions back to back to back. Um, you have five fouls to get in the bonus, so you've got five questions. Um, they're just about anything. So just have some fun with it. Um, try to answer quickly. Okay, here we go. Uh, favorite food spot in stores? Uh, E-Joy. E-Joy. What, what is that? It's like, uh, I would say it's like kind of like a poke bowl place. Ooh. Like, uh, mm -hmm. Chipotle, but like more like seafoody Yum. version. Yum. I don't okay. get seafood per I get the crispy chicken, but <laughs> okay. Yeah, crispy not, chicken. But, yeah. Got it. All right. Um, your most recent two fashion finds. Hmm. I, I recently wore a pink cardigan at one of our team dinners. 
Um, and then I love the Vomero Fives Nike shoes. Oh yeah, yeah, nice. Love that. Uh, any color? Any color. I like I like like bright and vibrant colors. So the the recent pair I just got was like this light. It's like all light blue pair. Mm. Oh nice. Huh. Love that. Um, favorite gospel singer. Ooh, that I would say Kirk Franklin or Marvin Sapp. Ooh. Okay. So you're rocking. Like you're really doing the gospel. Like we're upbeat. Okay, I love it. Um, you give me a one liner of a Coach Orion impersonation, but it's gotta be a one liner. In all my years of coaching, I have never seen this. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so good. so good. But then there's like the opposite in which he's like, I've been coaching for 40 years. Like I've seen it all. So like he plays both sides. <laughs> got you. Okay. Last one. Um, my favorite one. You got, uh, you got to pick three teammates to play three on three with. So you get two that are going to be on the court with you and then you get a sub. Or you can pick any three, male or female, college, W, NBA, dead or oh, alive. Anybody. Anybody, anybody, anybody can join this game. Anybody can join your team. Yes, you just no. need to build your three on three team. Yeah. Wait, so like, I'm the sub. Like, I pick three. Yeah. You don't have to be the sub. You can start. You, you but can I mean, be, you can. Oh, you got the court. You just got to pick three. Yeah, you just got to pick three. <laughs> I'm picking. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm real. Real big on loyalty, so I'm gonna go Nika Mule. Like self explanatory. You always want her. Like that's, that's just something you want on your team. Amen. Um, Olia Edwards, I need a big, and then AZ for the shooter. Oh, going with all love your that. teammates. I love, love that. Amazing. Love it. Well, Paige, awesome. Well, congratulations. You You're out of the bonus. bonus. You completed the thank bonus. You. Paige, thank you so much for joining us. Loyal to a fault. That's what we learned about Paige here today. <laughs> Paige, thank you so much. Best of luck the rest of the way. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks. That was so much fun. I think, guys, Paige, I think, is our very first guest who her entire team has been teammates that she's chosen. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, that's so, cool. like, perfect for her, first of all. Like, that's yeah. adorable. Also, I'm craving, like, a poke bowl now. Yeah. Thinking about <laughs> with, that. With fried chicken? No, with I would – well, I don't know from this restaurant. I'd have to look at the fish. But, like, no, I want I want tuna or something. Yeah, some tuna, some oh. salmon. Get your fish in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a jam-packed week and weekend of some really, really quality matchups. So, Lisa, let's start with you because you're actually highlighting um, – this pod is dropping Wednesday, so you're highlighting a game that is happening tonight. tonight. Tonight, yeah, turn on your televisions. Marquette, number 22, hosting – or, I'm sorry, on the road to play Villanova um, at Finneran Pavilion. That is 7 o'clock Eastern. Um tonight Wednesday night so a big matchup I think a really big test for Villanova as well coming off of five straight wins for them can they can they slow down Marquette a team that has proven to be pretty uh unstoppable up until this point they've done a really good job and then Marquette because this drops Wednesdays Marquette also plays UConn Tuesday January 23rd so next Tuesday Marquette UConn um that's I mean two top 25 teams playing against each other, a really big game between those two sides that's in Milwaukee. So uh, Marquette does just pretty well when they're at the Al McGuire center, Megan Duffy, she likes their side at home. Of course, you got to win those home games and against UConn, it's going to be a big test for, for Marquette and for that side against UConn. Ice, how about you? What games are you looking forward to this weekend? Yeah, I was going to say Marquette has a tough schedule that Lisa just told us about. So does Villanova this week. Uh, Villanova this week, um, it, it doesn't. It, it's just. It's not. It's not nice. It's Creighton, and then uh, after, it's just not nice. It's not nice. It's unfair, and that's how it happens sometimes. The schedule is tough, and I know Lisa talked to Coach Dillon about it. Uh, but they've got Marquette, and they've got Creighton later in the week. It's just two top twenty-five matchups. It's a good way to test yourself. If they can come out one and one this week, that is good. That is very good in the Big East. And right now, Villanova is four and one. And so they have an opportunity to build some separation right here. So I like that game as well. Um, and then on Monday, January 22nd, we've just got one of the rivalries in the Big East, uh, St. John's at Seton Hall. Uh, always excited to see those two coaches go at it, Coach Bozella and Coach Joe Tartamella. So um, I 
Tim Adams and John Fanta will be on the call for that one. I'm excited to work Ooh. with uh, that, those two guys um, and uh, really excited for, for a good battle. It's always a good time when the Red Storm and the Pirates match up. Yeah, we, we absolutely love it. And Lisa, was there one more that you were looking forward to? No, those are those are my two. Marquette oh, yeah, Nova and then Marquette UConn next Tuesday. I'm, I'm dropping them both this week because our episode won't come out again before the next one. Yeah. And uh, listen, I'm, I'm just getting so excited. What I about, have so much. Meg, what about you? To, are, are you excited about one of these? No, tonight. I'm excited for every single game that's happening. I actually got <laughs> I'm excited. I will head out on Saturday. The Big East, uh, the conference this year has been putting on a road show. We've got this awesome uh, Big East truck. If you've followed uh, Big East on social, on both Twitter and on Instagram, you've seen it. The uh, truck has already had a couple of stops. This is going to be stop number three, I believe. It's coming. It went Xavier Marquette. On Sunday, we will be at Butler. So I'm hosting the road show there. I'm excited. That is going to be, um, yeah, it's going to be Sunday morning. Uh, it's going to be getting us ready for the Providence Butler women's basketball game. That tips off Amazing. at 12 Eastern time. That game is airing on FS1. So if you're looking for a little bit of fun before the game, tune in, watch us. It's been, uh, the, the show so far have been so awesome. Meg, so how do we get to watch you? That is going to be streaming live. I believe we're going to be on Twitter. Okay, great. That. I need mm. to double check. There, some of the streams have been changing here and there. So um, it will be – make sure you're at least following Big East on Twitter because we'll announce um, exactly how the show will be streaming there. Amazing. So I'm excited. That's my first uh, road trip of the season. So I'm not on a game, right, but I get to um, go out and host the road show a little bit. Yeah, so that's great. Excited. We'll have so much fun with that. And Ice, good luck fun. on your game with John and Kim. Yeah. That, that's an all-star crew right there. Yeah. yeah. I also have another big game that I just have to say on the pod because at this point, if you can say you have a Caitlin Clark game, you Woo! just get ready to see gold. And so on Sunday, Iowa heads to Ohio State. That game is on NBC, uh, 12 p.m. local time. Super excited for the game. be my first time getting a chance to see um, her in person, um, getting to work with Latina Robinson and Zora Stevenson. Um, and just on NBC, just more women's games on NBC, which is what we want, more networks. And so, Amazing. Yeah, excited for that one. Yeah. Let's go. That's going to be awesome. Lots to look forward to, guys. Amazing. Yeah. All right, ladies. Well, this time next week, I'll see you two again. So are you guys ready to do it? I got to close this show down. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we'll have Kim, I think, is back with us next week. So, But um, we – are going to wrap it up here. So be sure to subscribe to In the Bonus by the Big East Conference on your preferred podcast listening platforms such as iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, Spotify, Deezer, TuneIn, Radio Public, Pandora, Overcast, Odyssey, Samsung Podcast, Pocket Cast, Player FM, Simplecast, Apple Podcast, as well as the Big East Conference YouTube page. And make sure to like, share, and review. You can also visit BigEast.com for more conference news and information. We'll see you next week for another episode of In the Bonus. Bye. Oh, that was awesome.